If you follow my Instagram, you'd know that this is somewhat of a long time coming. And I'll admit, I was pretty overly afraid not to mess this one up. I really enjoy my 9-string, being my go-to instrument to match an octave above the sub contrabasses and completing several cool projects with it. But I've been dreaming of a Strandberg ever since I first saw one. And as the years passed, more manufacturers got into the headless game, offering slightly lower prices. Who could deny the advantage of a lighter instrument with little neck dive that is usually seen experimenting in the realm of new ergonomic designs and technology? And in the spirit of experimenting, the foundation of this channel, I decided to stop dreaming that one day I'll be able to save up enough to buy one and just go ahead and make my own. Something being particularly beneficial on one of my favorite guitars on two levels. One, it'll make it lighter, and two, because it's hard to find a headless nine anyways, unless you custom order one at an even higher premium. Swallowing my fear, I finally pulled the trigger on this one. Now hopefully it's probably going to sound the same as my past projects, since we're not changing any of the electronics. So I'll put links to those in the description, and give you maybe this timestamp for a close-up playthrough. For what might end up being just a first draft design, this is Kevin from Said Too Much. First I cut the uh, embarrassingly old strings on there and removed all the hardware. Bridge saddles, tuners, knobs, electronics, pickups, truss rod guard, and rear neck strap button. It turned out to take more time and effort than I thought it would. String ferrules I just left alone cause I was too lazy to try and fill those holes up on top of everything else. Marking things out with the new bridge hardware, I positioned them where I knew they would have fresh spots for the mounting holes, and still be in similar locations to the old ones. Now I only have a table saw, so my design ideas have to stick to straight cuts for now. And on the body, it appeared going right through the back mounting holes of the original bridge pieces was the way to go. The headstock proved a little trickier, with another option of parallel to the fan of the frets cut, or a stray cut some other headless designs go with. But after pulling social media, I decided to go with the former. I made sure both designs could still accommodate a hex wrench for the truss rod if I need to adjust it, and the sloping nature of the remaining headstock will make sure all the strings are tightly angled at the nut. Short of making a new neck entirely, I'm not really sure how I would have made this particular neck hardware work. The lowest tuned string headstock hardware is also going to have to sit a little lower than the rest, because of an unfortunate gap the original machine had left. So finally going into cutting, my nerves really started to kick in. Committing all the way through though, I was relieved that I hadn't ruined it completely, just slightly trimming down the bridge ground wire because I forgot to tape it back or take it out. I then thought it was a good idea to take out my routing tool and trim down the remaining headstock to the width of the neck. A rookie mistake that now eliminates the possibility of putting it on a wall mount. But moving on and measuring out the area where the new bridge hardware would sit, I routed a cavity where the new extra mounting pieces need to rest for proper action. Then I whipped out the sander to make everything look clean and added a simple stain to match the original finish. The hardware I ordered was sold individually as one headstock piece and one bridge piece. So times nine, I ended up with a lot of excess packaging and more complimentary hex wrenches to add to the collection. To install the saddles, I stuck them in place with their mounting pieces attached using double-sided tape to make sure that they were correctly spaced before taking them off and drilling pilot holes. I don't have a drill press, so this part is always risky, but after screwing everything in place, it didn't turn out too bad. Only two of the tuners slightly scratched against their neighbors, something just slightly noticeable when I restrung it. Now the headstock again proved trickier. They have this nub along with one screw hole. I used a nail to dent out a space for the nub, but sometimes using excess force broke the weak nubs clean off anyway. And I messed up the pilot holes on the first two pieces that led to me screwing the head of the screws clean off. I'm pretty embarrassed, cause it happened twice. 
But moving on, and without using a drill press again, their placement turned out okay, but from trying to hammer them better in place, and trying to superglue them all together to make up for some of their missing nubs, it looked a little messy. I ended up drilling the pilot holes all the way through since the screws it came with went basically that deep anyway, and I also realized that they don't sit perfectly in front of their corresponding strings since the spacing is more compact on the thinner ones, which makes sense, I just hadn't thought of it. The harsh cut on the body didn't feel all that weird in my lap other than balance issues in the end, but for aesthetics and room to fit the electronics and neck strap button, I turned to the trusty 3D printer. I bought some partial wood filament thinking it would match the natural finish look, and my first thought was to create a ring where the old perimeter used to be, leaving an empty space underneath to move the tuners. Keeping the original body outline also ensured it would still sit easily in a standard guitar stand. I went through several designs along the way with some of the community weighing in, I thought maybe I could leave the inner fill structure exposed to demonstrate the intricacies 3D printing could provide over standard woodworking. But ultimately, for the sake of less things to go wrong, I ended up on this compromise design. Something that looks maybe a little bit fancy and is at least a good starting point to make sure I got all the measurements right. Printing in two parts, I bonded them with epoxy, took the sander to it to clean up the surfaces, and again added some stain to match the original stained maple as close as possible before finally bonding it to the body. I'll admit the stain doesn't match completely and bothers me a little, on top of it being really glossy on this material. My design ended up being only slightly off for the back plate, but I crudely trimmed it for the sake of not having to go through another 7 hour print and moved on to reinstalling the electronics, back neck strap button, and back plate. The 3D print infill was super easy to drill through of course, like butter, but the screws still hold if you are curious what that end up being like. Restringing became somewhat interesting again, trying to figure out how everything works in this new system. There are several different headless designs if you look up tutorials on how to restring. But using what little I already know, the string goes in through here and gets caught at the ball end. The hex screw here can clamp further down on the string and let you install it without one. You then want to string and clamp it pretty taut at the headstock end, making sure the end it was clamped to on the bridge hardware before has room to move out and away to tune up to pitch. Initial setup was actually pretty difficult because some of the hex screws are difficult to get to with actual strings on. But taking my time, I didn't have to compromise or even break a string just to fix a goof. I gradually committed to trimming the headstock portion of the strings, only because I was paranoid something might slip and I would need slack. But it held up fine. Another thing to mention is that I actually got that .065F sharp string to fit in the new hardware although it was pretty tight. To fit the custom .110C sharp string, I actually had to clip the ball end, but the taper luckily fit. Though the part where the string actually leaves the saddle looks a little ill-accustomed to fit a bass string. But I'm not having a problem with it slipping or anything, it just maybe looks a little awkward if you fixate on it. When finally plugging the whole thing into an amp, I realized that the bridge isn't grounded. Could be something's off about that wire I cut into now, but I'm kind of leaning more towards that new hardware being not conductive between the string and that bottom piece. Of course, a bridge and strings that aren't grounded give off a hum until you touch it, becoming the ground connection yourself. So we can kind of just work around it for now and troubleshoot some more later. I want to get a better feel for the guy before I start jumping into all the little tweaks. So what do you guys think? Did I butcher this? Obviously we shed a few pounds here, and I think it's pretty comfortable and well balanced playing it with a neck strap. 
I'm not entirely satisfied with this first prototype design. And I hate to admit it, but it's kind of mainly for aesthetic reasons too. I don't know, just thinking about all the other 3D printing materials I could have used, I'm thinking maybe more of a translucent one would have given that solid in half look more distinction. I had a little wooden piece trying to hold the electronics in a little better, but maybe just closing it up entirely and taking out those weird slats that were just not as cool as I thought they'd be would have been better. These are all ideas I can still apply to the 9 and we've got a good starting point. I really just want your guys' opinions, I might be overanalyzing this. It'd be cool to try and 3D print a whole guitar body, or we could just explore the headless guitar world more with several affordable kits out there I think we could mess with. Or we could just try to make some of my other gear headless. For now though, enough said. For early video access, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said so much.